The good folks at Sane Smart reached out to me a while back and asked if I'd like to check out one of their new CNC routers. And to be honest, I wasn't real crazy about it, but after I took a look at the link they sent to me, I thought this looks like a pretty cool machine, so I really did want to check this one out. I did a live unboxing and assembly of this machine on my Saturday Night Hobby CNC with Dave show. And I'll put a link in the description in case anybody wants to check that one out. But I thought I would do a little video and talk about my likes and dislikes of this machine. There's just a few dislikes, so I'll start with those and get those out of the way. One thing I noticed is they have the control box up on the left side of the machine up near the front. And if you look close, you can see there's... Uh, some e-stops and the power button but with that uh, USB connection coming out the front of it that might kind of get in the way if you have to hit that e-stop in a hurry and also the way the plug uh, just sticks in the side there I wish that was either either in the front or the back or maybe on top of that box but not sticking out horizontally like that because I feel like it might get knocked and uh, tore up a little bit the machine comes with a touch probe that, for setting the z-axis height and that's really nice but if you look at the wires uh, the black wire that goes up behind the machine I'll get you another view here to show you where that goes to here's a view of the back of the gantry and you can see the little black box and there I am plugging the plug in but uh, I really wish they had either mounted that box on the side where it's stationary or uh, put a different style plug because that's something you're going to be wanting to plug in and plug, you know, unplug quite often. And uh, the type plug they're using is, you know, probably going to get messed up after a while. So, and then also you can see the connections there on the end of that box. That's where you plug the laser and the, uh, I think it's the air assist and things plug in there as well. This one's not a deal breaker, but they uh, provide a couple of pieces of MDF uh, that has the threaded inserts in it, and it's pretty nice, except if you're using it as I'm showing here, uh, you can see that there's no real support under the center part of it. So not a, not a deal breaker, but uh, you probably will have to add something, uh, you know, a piece of wood or something under there just to give it a little extra support. And finally, here's a picture of the stock hold down clamps that they provide with these uh, smaller machines. And I hate these things. Uh, one, because they're so fiddly to try to get uh, adjusted to hold it down. And for another, I think that uh, a lot of people that are buying these smaller machines are complete noobs at this stuff. And uh, you see the stuff sticking up and it's steel. So it's uh, what I call a, a newbie killer with the... Uh, you know with a steel stick bolt sticking up and stuff like that i just think they're uh, an accident waiting to happen for a newbie with those things here's some uh hold down clamps that i 3d printed and you can see it's uh even using the existing screws it's a much lower profile and i really think companies should think about uh just providing a handful of something like this rather than those metal things that they always include because uh this is a lot less uh, of a chance for a newbie or even an experienced person uh, having a big collision with those bolt heads sticking up. That's it for the dislikes. Now let's take a look at some of the things uh, that I like about this machine. I mean, first of all, look at it. It's uh, a really slick looking design. It's... Uh, you can tell there's a lot of thought put into the design as far as making it easy to assemble and uh, it's just just a good looking design here's a look showing the locating pins that they provide there's like eight of them and there's one on each corner and you can see the locating pins are right in between where the uh, screws are on the right and left side of that so it really makes it almost impossible to not get it lined up and get it square, which is really pretty important. Another thing that really impressed me was the, uh, the 
the way the whole machine's made, but these side uh, rails here, the Y axis, here's a picture of one. You can see there's an upper and lower round rail, and then there is also uh, a lead screw, uh, which provides the uh, the linear motion. No, none of this uh, V screw or uh, V wheels and uh, flimsy belts and stuff like that. Uh, I wish manufacturers would stop making <laughs> CNCs with belts. Uh, those are made fine for uh, diode lasers and 3D printers, but they're not for CNC routers. There is an e-stop and the power button uh, built right into the side rail there. As I mentioned, they provide a couple of MDF pieces with threaded inserts if you want to use that as part of your bed. And they also show a second method in their instruction booklet where you can just bolt it right down to a table surface and use that instead. Another feature that I thought was a really nice touch is that they provide a knurled knob on each of the four stepper motors. So you have uh, two of them on the Y axis, one of them on the X axis, and then one of them on the Z. And they call them manual jogging wheels. And one of my favorite things about this machine is that the, the number of different spindles and routers that you can use with it, as well as a couple of laser modules. This is the stock 75 watt uh, spindle motor that comes with it. And if you look close, you can see that there's kind of a sleeve that fits inside that router mount. So if you pull that out, you can also use a 52 millimeter spindle motor in it and if you pull all of that out there you can see the the stock motor and the sleeve setting down on the table this is the uh, five and a half watt laser module that uh, fits in there so you can use it with that I, I believe there's a 10 watt laser that they sell separately as well that will work in this same uh, mount like this and then there's also a 65 millimeter and a 69 millimeter separate router mount that you can get and here's what you can do with those there are four bolts two on each side that hold this stock spindle mount on and you just take those out and it pulls right off this is the larger 69 millimeter mount that i purchased separately and with that this allows me to use a couple of different routers I have two routers that are 69 millimeter and one of one of them is this Porter Cable 450 compact router. It uh, it's a pretty nice little router. It does not have variable speed. It's just a uh, turn it on and it is what it is, but it's still a, a pretty nice little router. The other router I have that's a 69 millimeter is this DeWalt 611. It is a little nicer than the Porter Cable in that it does have the variable speed. And this might be the one that I use a lot on this, uh, this new machine. And finally, here is a shot with the Makita router installed in that 69 millimeter router mount. Now you'll notice that orange uh, piece around it. That is a sleeve that I 3D printed. The Makita router fits in the 65 millimeter router mount but rather than buy the, having to buy the 65 and the 69 router mount I just bought the 69 and then 3d printed a sleeve and it, it makes a good snug fit and it'll work fine like that here is a close-up of the Makita router with the sleeve in this router mount and then there's also a picture here with the sleeve showing on the Makita router Depending on which one of these routers or spindles you're wanting to use, the uh, Z-axis shown here, you can see that there's uh, four, uh, four sets of holes to mount it. So you can, you know, raise it higher if you need it, more Z height for a larger uh, router like the Makita or the DeWalt or the Porter Cable. Or if you're going to use the sock spindle, you can lower it down using a different set of holes. So that's a nice touch too that you can... Uh, make that really adjustable. Okay, if you got anything out of this video, please leave it a thumbs up. 
and if you want to see all the testing that I'm going to be doing in the next video uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you'll know when I uh, release the next video and I'm going to be doing a test of all the different routers you saw in this video as well as the stock spindle and the laser module so uh, lots of tests to go I figured it would make this video too long but uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to catch that next one and until the next one, thank you very much for watching.